My name is Tony. I'm 48 years old. Recently in my life, I was feeling strange, nervous and anxious. Like something was off. Or like something was about to happen. My wife Sarah said I was just depressed. Or maybe I wasn't happy about my work and needed a change. I thought she could be correct. I was working as a manager in a retail company that exported all kinds of products from China. The money was good, but yeah, far from being the job of my dreams. In any case, I couldn't quit my job just because I was probably having a midlife crisis. The thing started to get creepier one night when my wife and I were making love, and I closed my eyes for two seconds. When I opened my eyes, it was no longer my wife who was on top of me, but my Chinese-American boss, Mr. Kang. With a big smile on his face, his bald head and small moustache all sweaty. When Mr. Kang said, Tony, you're the best and most qualified employee I've ever had. I love you so. Now, kiss me. I snapped and pushed him out of bed. But who in reality fell was my wife. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I guess it depends on the perspective. Sarah wasn't happy at all. What's wrong with you? Is this some sick sex movement? Don't try us again, Tony, or I swear I'll leave you. I hate this freak stuff. You better find another way to deal with your depression, anxiety, or whatever the hell you have. You could have hurt me for real. I was lucky our floor had a big carpet and I fell with a blanket around me, my wife said. Sarah, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. It's just, I know you won't believe me. But, for a moment, it wasn't you anymore who was there with me. It was my boss. I tried to explain, looking even more serious than she was. Mr. Kang? Oh, dear, are you sure? You are Mr. Kang. Sarah sighed, and she kept repeating the name of my boss like a broken record. She started laughing, and laughing, and laughing. Sarah was walking around the bed, looking at me like she was an insane clown, pointing her finger at me, her eyes and mouth wide open as her laughter was now completely hysterical. I felt like the entire room was spinning around me. Suddenly there was more than one Sarah in there, and I saw duplicates of my wife popping up, the different Sarahs were now dancing together, and all of them were laughing. And if that wasn't enough, someone opened the bedroom door. It was Mr. Kang, wearing one of his fancy suits. He came to me and gave me a trophy, with the words Manager of the Year. And then, everything started going back to normal, so to speak. The room was no longer spinning around. Mr. Kang left and took the trophy back with him, and all Sarahs except one left as well. It was like they knew they were supposed to leave. Like it wasn't their world anymore. Tony. Tony, are you listening to me? The remaining Sarah, who was definitely not laughing, was now speaking to me. Ah, yes dear, I'm sorry. I I'm not feeling so good. I answered, deciding not to tell her what I just experienced. Again. You need to take time off from your job, Tony. Have some rest. Probably see a doctor. But I'm pretty sure that a couple of weeks away from the company and all that stress, and especially away from Mr. Kang, will do the trick. Ah, Tony. Tony, let's get some sleep. And try not to beat me or push me, or kill me, while I'm sleeping, okay? Good night, Sarah said as she turned over, lying next to me. Good night, Sarah. I replied as I switched off the bedroom lights. And I just stood there, in the dark next to my wife. Thinking about her words right before she went to sleep. Try not to beat me, push me, or kill me while I'm sleeping. And suddenly, in my head I started to hear the words, Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. It was like someone else was in my head. But it wasn't me. Like the Pink Floyd song, Dark Side of the Moon. I started to sweat and I think I had a panic attack. It was, by then, the most traumatic experience of my life. I was fighting against myself in my head, without knowing which one of those was going to win. Meaning, without knowing if my body was receiving orders to murder my wife or not. I decided to get out of bed, out of the bedroom. Breathing heavily, I went to the kitchen to get a glass of water. I ended up drinking five glasses. I felt the water becoming a part of my body. I couldn't even tell who I was. The different voices in my brain were now calming. I took a Valium. 
went to the living room and sat on the couch. At least there my wife could sleep in peace. As days went by, things started to get worse. My world seemed to be unraveling at the seams. Everywhere I looked, it felt like something was off. The people around me moved in slow motion, and seconds stretched out for what felt like hours. As I tried to make sense of my surroundings, a sudden chill ran down my spine, as an invisible force grabbed me from behind. When this happened, I was walking around the streets at night. I told my wife I had to work late hours, but I simply needed to clear my mind. The dark nocturnal hours and the movement of my steps always helped. When I looked back to confront who was grabbing me, I saw nothing. Well, at first at least. I could see a hollow figure. Then I saw something else. I guess I can call it a vortex, a circle of energy that was now materialising itself behind the hollow figure who was grabbing me. What's happening? Let me go wherever you are, I shouted. At least I did so in my head, but the words weren't coming out of my mouth. I couldn't move and was completely helpless when the hollow figure took me with it, as we both entered the vortex or portal. I didn't feel my body anymore as I was being taken through a corridor made of light. All this was happening very fast. The light was so bright that I couldn't see anything. I could hear several sounds, including human voices, animals, explosions, etc. It was overwhelming and painful. Then, when this bizarre journey finally ended, I found myself inside a room. There were all sorts of screens being displayed. The hollow figure was there with me, as well. In fact, as I looked at my hands, arms and the rest of my body, I realised I was now a hollow figure too. The creature who had brought me to that place was communicating with me, but through thoughts. I'll display the words exchanged between us as if they were an oral and verbal dialogue for better understanding. Welcome, Tony. I'm sorry for bringing you here. But once in a while, a man or a woman is brought to one of the programming areas. Who are you? What are you? I asked. You can call me Game Master. That's probably a term that humans can understand. I exist beyond the material realm. I'm part of a race of beings who have pure energy. Initially, we had no form, but we could create those forms as we created the entire universe. Actually, several versions of it. Come and see for yourself, Tony. Take a look, the self-entitled Game Master said, instructing me to look at the screens. Each screen was displaying me, or better said, alternative versions of me, in which I had different life path. I could feel the thoughts and emotions of those different Tonys. In one of those lives, I was a jazz musician with long hair, addicted to alcohol and drugs. In another, I was someone who made wildlife documentaries. Also a low-level criminal who was living in a cheap motel. All of those individuals were me. But they weren't me at the same time. And the fact that I could feel and experience all of that made me realise it was true. What is the meaning of this? Are you... God? I asked. Yes, I think you can call me that. From your point of view, that would be a correct analogy. But one of the gods... Sometimes the different projects, they blend, and so people start losing control of their minds. This is what was happening to you, but not without a purpose. As I stated once in a while, one of you humans is told the truth, Game Master said. Always through thought communication, important to remember. But why? This is just too much for me to comprehend. We, the Game Masters, also enjoy seeing how humans deal with such information. Such has been happening since the dawn of time, and different legends and existential theories are born. Religions, and more recently the Matrix Theory. It's very amusing and interesting for us to analyse all that. Call it a test. Humans themselves like to teach animals all sorts of things, and they have fun with that. This is an analogy that you can also understand. Of course, sometimes... Those men and women who are brought to their own programming center don't have the necessary mental strength to deal with it, and they simply go insane, becoming dangerous, both to others and to themselves, Game Master explained. That's sadistic. Why would you build such a program? I mean, life itself, I asked. It's not sadistic, Tony. Every time you are sick, you want to kill the viruses that infect you. It's all a matter of perception, of hierarchies, and remember, 
the fact that you think this is sadistic is because we, the Game Masters, created that emotion and made it part of the collective human mind. Everything that you are and everything that you are not is because of us. And now, what are you going to do with me after telling me all this? I asked. I'll let you return to your own program. And you can share with everyone. You want what you learned. Or maybe not. It's up to you. We the Game Masters also feed on the emotions of the life forms that we created. It's a source of energetical food for us. So people like you become a treat. Because you're so overwhelmed with the truth that your brain cannot stop functioning. Moving from one extreme emotion to the other. Let's say that it's a highly tasty and nutritious outcome for us, Tony. Now it's time for you to go. To your time and space. And remember, there's absolutely no philosophical or existential meaning to any of this. Life is just a project. Nothing more, nothing less. A project that we can terminate or resume whenever we want. Goodbye, Tony. This was the Game Master's final communication. Then, I felt my essence going back through that tunnel of light. I lost consciousness and when I woke up, I was lying in a hospital bed with my wife by my side. Tony, you're awake. I'm so glad you're okay, Sarah said as she hugged me. What happened? I asked. You were found lying in the streets. For some reason, your body was very weak. I told you, you must take some time off work. I already spoke to your boss, Mr. Kang, and he agrees. Thank God you're okay, dear, Sarah said. Yes, Sarah. Thank God. Thank God. Subscribe today or beware.